Ahoy, my friends. Welcome aboard the Afro Tales Podcast. I'm your storyteller, Amon Mazinga. Join me as we explore the tales that grew from the people of indigenous and African descent in the Americas and the Caribbean. After, come and see me, chef, who will impart upon you a recipe for the story you have just heard. So with no further ado, let us set sail on this new age of exploration. Lena and Big One Tiger. There was this glory looking young girl in a time when animals talked. She was Lena, beauty, and she was always saying, I'll never marry a man who's marked wounded. She meant any man scarred or clawed. She said it all the time. There was that animal called Big One Tiger. And he heard Lena talking from way off. He thought she was pretty. And he decided to turn himself into a young man. He dressed himself up all swell and drove to Lena's house in a real fine buggy. Lena saw that buggy with sable horses. She came out to look at the young man buggy ride. She called her mama and said, Mama, come out here and see. When her mama came out there, Lena says to her, Right there's a young man I will marry. I agree, he certainly is a good looking man. Well, Big One Tiger did marry Lena. And he carried her over right then in his handsome buggy. He did. They went on down to the deep swamp where Big One Tiger lived. He put Lena there. You will stay here until I come back. Well, Big One left her there with nothing to eat in the whole world. He left her there with just a fly to mind her too. And Big One told the fly, If anyone bothers Lena, well, you must come and tell me. The fly buzzed right back. Lena stayed in the swamp for three whole days and nights. She had nothing on her tongue down to her stomach the whole time. There was this ugly, dried up carcass and one bone left by Big One Tiger. And that's all she had to look on. Now this is true. There was an old man who knew Lena's family well. One day he went out hunting and the tracks led him to the swamp. He heard yelling, help me, help me please. To his great shock, he found Lena there looking half dead and whole scared. She told old man Jacob, I I married this fellow and he brought me here. I don't know why. Old Jacob told him, I saw his track and yours. He may stand up right, but he ain't no man. He's a tiger, I tell you. Lena nearly fainted. (sighs) She didn't know what to do. Meantime, the fly went to tell Big One Tiger what was going on and that someone was with Lena. Big One Tiger came flying back yelling, Old Jacob and Lena couldn't make head nor tail of it. And Big One came close, looking like a man he did, with tiger eyes. He was trying to make Lena lose her faith. He was standing over Jacob, trying to make him tremble. But Jacob had the answer. He said, And Big One Tiger Man runs a spear through his own side and says the same thing. This time, both Lena and Jacob answer him the same way. Not 
Then the big one tiger says, well, well, Lena, you can, you can follow Jacob out of here. I, I won't hurt you. I just may marry you to let you know a woman can't be more than a man. Be, because you said you would, you wouldn't marry a, a man. Be, be, because you say you you wouldn't marry a young man who had been mock wounded. I, I tricked you to show show you how you didn't know everything. Right away, big one shifted to four feet and ran off, looking like a tiger. Ooh, glad that is over. He sure fooled me. She and Jacob hurried out of there and never came back. The end. Wow, so this story is awesome. It is by Virginia Hamilton in her, in her book, Her Stories. I really don't even know what to say about this. Um, Lena is a woman growing up near the Gullah region, uh, near the Sea Islands, uh, in from that go from uh, North Carolina all the way down to Georgia. If you're in that region, you know what I'm talking about. It's the um, Gullah Geechee coastline. And she says that she'll never marry a man that's wounded or clawed. I can almost take that as meaning a, if if you take out the animal aspect, a man that is um, so hurt that he can't love a woman. This is just my own um I'll take on it or a me or a man that is let's say even misogynistic or let's just say so brash that he actually just hurts his woman if you understand what I mean and she, she'll never love a man that can't love her right and that's something that I don't think a lot of people say is to be loved right and so she sees this this young man come up this tiger in disguise, this brash man in disguise, and who portrays himself as somebody that can love her right. And so she, you know, gets happy, tells mom, I'm gonna marry that guy. I'm gonna marry that 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 man. And he then takes her and puts her in a situation where that she wasn't expecting, honestly. And that she saw once she got there, the the blinders came off and she saw that she was in deep, dark trouble. And if it wasn't for a friend, um, whether this friend was the hunter or anybody else in your relationship, anybody else in your personal uh, relationships, a friend that saw the negativity, that saw that this person was bad. And this can go for man or woman. This story... Yeah, it's it, it's a it's a told from the female perspective, but this can go for man and woman because we both get with people that aren't right for us, you know, and but that outsider, that friend that we have that can see all the BS and can see how wrong the relationship is, comes in and says, "Yeah, that's not a man." Or that's not a woman. That is a tiger. That is a beast in disguise. And they're coming to hurt you, you know? And if you if you ever think about toxic people, right? And and maybe that's what I should say. This this big one tiger is a toxic person. Okay? They have a friend that's going to watch and look out and try to help manipulate, you know, the other person that's in trouble. And as soon as, hey, hey, hey you know, they're trying to steal your girl, man. They know, hey, these, these girls, they're trying to steal your dude, you know, what, whatever the case may be. Or just pass messages along to, so that way they can, that tax per, person can keep them 
under their control, you know? And maybe that's not what this story is exactly saying. This story was written back in the 1890s, you know? This is this is hundreds, you know, it's over 100 years old. Maybe they had a different aspect back then. But let's just say, because we're looking at it from today's point of view, watch those toxic people. Listen to your friends that come out of nowhere or that are close by and can tell you, hey, watch out. That person ain't right for you, you know? Listen to them because they may have the words to help get you out of that relationship, even if they sound like gibberish at the time, like Jacob's words sounded. And our big ones sound, sounded with him, woo, 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 you know? Not saying much, just trying to scare. You know, but awesome story um, passed down from by Virginia Hamilton to the rest of us and now from me to you. And as always, you know, go see Chef. He has a wonderful recipe from the Gullah people. I know he does. And until the next time we meet, as always, stay blessed. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the galley. I am your chef, Chef, and today we have a wonderful meal inspired by the story we have just heard. Today, we'll be making a gola recipe called crab rice. Now, what will you need for this recipe? Two cups dry rice, preferably Carolina oak. Three and a half cups of water, one tablespoon butter, three strips of bacon, third cup of vegetable oil, one medium green bell pepper chopped, one small onion chopped, one stalk of celery chopped, eight ounces or half a pound of crab meat. Lump or claw is fine. Fresh is best. But you can only get what you have in your area. Half a tablespoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of Maggie chicken bouillon, or whatever chicken bouillon you have, or one cube of chicken bouillon, and half a cup of water. Salt and pepper to taste, obviously. Half a tablespoon of Cajun seasoning, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, and half a tablespoon of Old Bay seasoning. Now, how do we put this wonderful dish together? Easy. First, you will add the rice in a pot with water, butter, and a pinch of salt and pepper. Bring it to a boil, stir, and Cover. Turn the heat to low so let it simmer for about 20 minutes or until all water has evaporated from the rice. In a large skillet, cook the bacon until crispy. Keeping the grease in the skillet, remove the bacon from the skillet and crumble the bacon. Set that aside. Okay? Now, Add the oil to the skillet with the bacon grease on high heat. Once hot, add in the celery, the peppers, and onions. Season with a pinch of salt and pepper and cook until soft on medium heat, stirring this occasionally about 10 minutes. Add crab meat to the skillet and season with Old Bay Cajun, smoked paprika, and garlic powder. Cook for about five minutes, stirring occasionally. Now, add one teaspoon of chicken bouillon and the half cup of water to the skillet. 
bring it to a boil and let liquid reduce by half. Add in the cooked rice, stir to incorporate everything together and cook for about the five additional minutes. And that is it. You are all done, my friends. Now, go, do what you do. Make this recipe yours and let me know how it comes out. And until I have another recipe for you, always remember what Lena and Jacob did. And until then, as always, enjoy. Thank you for joining us on this voyage. Thanks to Art by Chalet for the logo, episode, and t-shirt designs. You may also get a t-shirt and other items on tpublic.com. You can contact me on all socials at AfroTalesCast. That's Afro, T-A-L-E-S, cast. And email me at AfroTalesPodcast at yahoo.com. You may also become a benefactor by simply sharing with any and everyone, giving a thumbs up, or rating in your podcast app of choice. If you wish to donate, I am on Patreon and Coffee.com. That's K-O-F-I.com. So, until we meet again, may your winds be fair and your seas follow. <laughs>